1834, the first Russian houses were built here in this part of Azerbaijan. Families from the Molokan community settled here after being exiled from Russia for breaking away from the rules of the Russian Orthodox Church. Their descendants still speak Russian and keep up Russian traditions. Ivanovka village is well known in Azerbaijan. Locals speak Azeri, but their mother tongue is Russian. Every child knows their history. Catherine the Great exiled them from Russia, and after wandering for many years, they finally settled here and found what they call their heaven on earth. They didn't accept the idea of icons. They only prayed directly to God. So Catherine ordered the Molokan faithful to be exiled from Russia. That's how it started. They moved around a lot. No icons, no candles, no decoration, no priests. This is what the Moloccans call the praying house. Euronews was granted rare permission to film their prayers. With the elders in the centre, the group form what's called a chancel. Others must keep their distance. The elders look after the spiritual life of the village, trying to convince couples not to divorce, for example, and young people not to drink alcohol. The elders sit at the top. If there's a question that needs to be resolved, we, the men, stay after the ceremony and think about how to solve it. Almost every house in Ivanovka has a traditional Russian stove. It's not used every day, just for special occasions. Today is Valentina's birthday and she cooks the most famous Moroccan dish, lapsha, which means noodles. Easter, marriage or even a funeral. And noodles are a must for the table. Without noodles, it's not a real feast. Ivanovka is the only village in Azerbaijan that still works as a collective farm. They got special permission from the authorities to maintain what was once one of the richest such enterprises in the USSR. Despite economic hardship, the residents can't imagine privatizing the land. Ivan worked on the farm his whole life. After retiring, he became a beekeeper. He says the flowers in Ivanovka are unique and that's why his honey is tasty and good for you. All of these lands you see belong to Ivanovka. When our forefathers came here, there were trees everywhere, and they uprooted them with their bare hands. What we see now is the fruit of the labor of our fathers and grandfathers. Ivanovka is open to new arrivals. John is from the UK. He came here for a one-day visit and decided to stay. He and his wife, Tatiana, run a guest house. Their dishes are made from homegrown vegetables, Duck and eggs come from the neighbors. We often get people coming on, on the Silky Way route, coming from Europe or coming from the east, and they come through Ivanovka and they always stop at our house, so we get all nationalities. John's neighbors, Anastasia and Vasily, are also welcoming and were happy to show us around. Their home and way of life is a window onto the past to when the first Wolokans arrived in Ivanovka. This is my bridal trunk from when we got married in 1955. It contains my diary. I was 17 when I made this embroidery and after I became a wife. They've lived happily since, praying before meals, working on the farm and keeping alive their Moroccan faith. After recently celebrating the 58th wedding anniversary, Anastasia and Vasily hope Ivanovka will always stay as it is. Not far from here is another unique village, just like Ivanovka. It's famous for its hospitality. One of the oldest native people of the Caucasus, the Udis, live there. Their forefathers were even mentioned by Herodotus. How do the Udis live nowadays? We'll see in the next edition of Azeri Life. <laughs>